It is the day before 4th of July and we are going to my parents tonight to shoot off fireworks. But before we go, I have some chores I need to get done and I need to make something to bring for the meal tonight. The one plus side to not getting much rain at all this summer is that I have not had to weed eat the garden. I think this was the first time I did in over two weeks, but we did finally get some rain. So I was very happy about that and the garden needed a little bit of maintenance. Uh, my potatoes are beyond ready to come out, but I don't have time to dig them all up today. However, I'm going to make some potato salad to bring tonight. So I just pulled back my weed barrier enough to dig up a few plants and I'm excited to see what my yield looks like this year. You know, I labeled these rows because I have a few different varieties of potato planted, but I don't know what happened to my labels. They're not there. So it looks like these are my Yukon gold. I just went with the basics. I actually ordered big boxes of potato, organic potatoes from Azure Standard. Um, I got Yukon gold, russet, and red potatoes. And I just use those for my seed potatoes. It's much cheaper than buying, you know, quote unquote seed potatoes. You, you can use any kind of good quality potato to plant in your garden. Okay, so this is not looking too bad. They're not that big, which I'm not that surprised because we didn't get that much rain and I watered the best that I could, but it's just not the same in my opinion. However, just from one plant, you can see how many little potatoes I got there in the basket. So each plant is giving me a pretty good yield, even though they're not, not the biggest potatoes. I actually like the little bitty ones, the little new potatoes. Those are delicious. So just from this little space right here, I probably got like seven, eight pounds. That's not too bad. I'll take it. I, when I was weed eating, I accidentally clipped the tops off of a few onions, so I'm just going to look for those and pull those onions up and use them in my potato salad. When I cook, I rarely use a recipe. I just use what I have, um, but I've got an idea for today. Got some chives here. Chives are perennial. They come back every year, and I really like having chives in the garden, so I'm going to cut some of those. And th this looks really appetizing. This is a <laughs> scrap bucket. So before I go inside and start cooking, this needs to go down to the pigs. And for my potato salad, I need to collect eggs as well. Our pigs, they do have access to dirt. So they're not just on concrete or on a slab or anything. I don't, I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like raising them that way. Um, so they, they've got lots of dirt and they get a good quality feed but they also get all of our table scraps well i should say the pigs and the chickens get the table scraps because they do share all of that and so i don't feel bad you know i don't waste i try to make a, a habit of not wasting things by the way this is not good i probably shouldn't do that but i do i do it every day i climb over barbed wire <laughs> Um, but I, I try to make a habit of not wasting food, but you know if we if I have scraps or something that I can't use It just gets turned into bacon. So I feel pretty good about that You know when we first got chickens my husband thought I was crazy for getting so many Hens and we were kind of wondering what we would do with all the eggs But what I have found is that when I have eggs, I use them. I can find so many ways to use our eggs. I use probably at least a dozen a day, and I could use more, especially as our kids grow. Um, our oldest son is almost 12, so you know, growing boys, growing kids, lots of food, and I can put eggs in pretty much anything. When you free range your chickens, you know, you do kind of have to look everywhere. So I'm peeking in the stalls here just to see if I see any eggs. They like to lay in here sometimes, but I got enough from the coop. You know, they always lay some in the coop. They just hide little stashes around the farm as well. Got my potatoes here, so I'm going to get started on my potato salad. I wanted to tell you guys something. 
first. So I have some garlic sitting out on my counter from last night. My daughter woke me up around midnight with an earache. And garlic, if you didn't know this, is fabulous for earaches. This has been my go-to for like five years now. Um, and when my kids were little, they had chronic ear infections. Then again, our lifestyle was different. Uh, the main thing that was different, something I didn't know when they were little, is that they all went to a pediatrician. And you know what happens at pediatricians. They get these things in their arms, right? And I just did all of that because I was a nurse and I thought that's a good thing to do. I had never read any of the side effects or anything. I hadn't read anything about them. But um, down the road a little ways, I did realize after doing some reading that chronic otitis media, which otitis media is just ear infections, chronic ear infections is a side effect that is listed on the manufacturer insert of some of the things. So all three of my big kids had chronic ear infections and it was bad enough that it definitely disrupted our life. They were always miserable. Two of my kids had to get tubes. Um, I was giving them antibiotics all the time. Once again, you guys see how much my lifestyle has changed. Um, we, we, I haven't used antibiotics in yeah, years and years and years. But that's just what I did back then. Like I said, I was a nurse. I thought this is how we do things. So we really struggled with ear infections, but this baby, number four, he is 18 months and he has not had one ear infection. And, you know, we've made one change and that's that we haven't done any of the things. So take that or leave it. But anyway, I do treat ear infections differently now. I don't use antibiotics because most ear infections are not bacterial, um, so antibiotics aren't going to work. What they're going to do is just wipe out all the good bacteria in the gut and cause more problems. Now, when one of my kids gets an earache, it's almost always, it's rare. It's maybe once or twice a year. But you know, it always is in the middle of the night. They wake up, their ears hurting, they're crying. And I just go for the garlic. So I grow garlic. I've got lots of it. It's one of my favorite things as far as natural medicine goes. So I just grab a clove of garlic and needs to be fresh garlic, not pre-cut or pre-minced fresh garlic. I grab a clove of garlic and just cut a little piece off um, and then put it in their ear and that's it. <laughs> not small enough that it would go down in the ear canal. You don't want garlic getting lost in your child's ear. And I've done this myself too actually. So um, it works. Yeah, just cut a little piece of fresh garlic, put it right inside the ear. Um, if they're big kids, then it'll stay in. If they're little, you might have to put a little piece of like the medical tape, um, paper tape that comes off and on easy. You don't want it to be super sticky. They'll cry when you take it off, <laughs> but you might have to tape over the garlic. It works within one to two hours. Every single time for us, this has worked. Now, if your child has something structural going on, like little ones, um, you might need a chiropractor adjustment too. But for my kids, you know, this is just something that pops up here and there and the garlic works. So my daughter came out, came to get me in my room around midnight and I just like stumbled out to the kitchen, <laughs> cut up a little piece of garlic, put it in her ear, got out the heating pad and laid with her on the couch. And you know, within a half an hour she was sleeping. And so then I just went back to bed and she slept the rest of the night. And this is how it goes every time. It works so well, it's just so effective. And then this morning she said it was fine. So I just had to share that tip with you guys about the garlic. And just to explain why this works, there is actually a chemical compound in garlic called allicin, A-L-L-I-C-I-N. So look it up, don't take my word for it. Know why you're doing what you're doing. Look that up. But allicin's very powerful. Um, some studies have shown that it can be just as powerful as pharmaceuticals. Um, I wouldn't use it in like a life or death situation. People always want to come on here and like put words in my mouth that I'm not saying like, oh, if I get in a car wreck and, you know, lose both my legs, you want me to rub garlic on them? Like, no, that's not what I'm saying. But <laughs> it can be really effective for just little everyday things that you feel like you don't need to go to the doctor for. Uh, another thing that I like garlic for is prevention and treatment of GBS, which is group beta strep in pregnancy. I'll do a video on that later down the road because that's a whole different conversation, but 
I think that's enough information for you guys to go do a little research and just be sure to keep good quality fresh garlic on hand. It's got lots of uses. Now I need to get these <laughs> this other stuff out of my basket and wash some potatoes. So any of the potatoes that I hit with the shovel and accidentally cut in half, I definitely want to wash and use those. I don't want to leave those out and store them. So I'm going to look for those. And once again, guys, no recipe. Um, this is just how I cook. I just use what I have and eyeball everything. And I know that can frustrate people, but I think that's an important skill that a lot of us could stand to learn with a little bit of trial and error. Being resourceful in the kitchen really does come in handy and it helps to avoid wasting things because you can always just take what you have and throw something together. All right, I'm gonna boil these potatoes. And you know what? I forgot to cut these up before I boiled them. I should have diced them before I boiled them, but that's okay. I can just dice them after. It's potato salad, it'll be fine. I'm gonna get some eggs boiling too. So if you have ever tried to hard boil and peel farm fresh eggs, you will know it can be very difficult. Well, this is your trick. This is how you make it very easy. You add some baking soda. I don't know how much, maybe a teaspoon, <laughs> tablespoon, whatever. Just add some baking soda to your water before you boil your eggs. So I add my baking soda into my water. Oh, there's a crack there. You always gotta check your, check your eggs for cracks. But I add my baking soda, then put my eggs in, and then boil. Okay, I need to use a few more of these eggs because I'm out of mayonnaise, and I need mayonnaise for the potato salad. So I have been making mayonnaise for years now. I can't tell you the last time I bought mayonnaise from the store because it's one of those things, I feel like I say this about everything, but it really is true that once you get used to it, you, you get hooked and, and you get spoiled and it's really hard to go back. Plus it's easy to make homemade mayonnaise. So um, let's see, yeah, you need an immersion blender. I've made it by hand. You can use a whisk. Wow. Uh, it takes forever. It's very hard and your arm will be very sore. So this recipe here, I think it's on my blog. I'll link it, but it's just two eggs in a mason jar. I use a quart jar and then a little bit of salt. I don't know, teaspoon, something like that. Now normally next I would add lemon juice, like a tablespoon, but I was out, so that's fine. I add in about a tablespoon of yellow mustard and then, last but not least, a whole bottle of avocado oil. Um, I've used olive oil. It is very harsh. It's not good. It's almost not edible. So I really like the mild taste of avocado oil. I haven't experimented with anything else. This is just what I use. It's what works for me. So this is very quick. <laughs> the whole process is like under one minute you can see it's almost done there just start at the bottom with your immersion blender work your way up and there you have it nice thick creamy mayonnaise all ready to go so another thing i'm going to put in my potato salad which might be strange for you guys is relish um i don't know if you've ever has anyone ever done that Put pickles or relish in your potato salad I really like it so I need to I set those pickles there I made those last year those are bread and butter um, I need to cut some pickles up to make relish first I'm going to fry some bacon now bacon needs to go in everything in my opinion bacon just makes everything 20 times more delicious plus we always have a ton of bacon because we have the pigs so we have a ton of everything um, that's one thing I'm so grateful for is just having lots of um, pork and beef, lots of meat all the time. There's work that goes into it obviously, but it's very rewarding, very nice to have on hand. It makes cooking a whole lot easier. Now this tool right here came from my husband's grandma. So this side I'm using is a jar opener, which is very nice because you know it can be hard to open those canned lids. And the other side is actually a jar lifter. So I really like the old, old hand-me-down tools. All right, these pickles are really good. They are bread and butter, and I would share the recipe, but I don't remember it. Um, actually, one of my dad's friends is where I got the recipe last year, and I, I didn't write it down, so I need to get it again this year because they were the best pickles ever. All right, I've got my 
chives here. Just going to chop up some stuff. Um, kind of making this up as I go. I've got my relish, got my chives. After I get this chopped up, I will add in some onion. The onion that I uh, got out of the garden today, the one that I cut the tops off of. My onions aren't quite ready. You know, when you harvest onions, you really want the tops to be brown and leaning over. And my tops are still green and are very much sticking straight up in the air. Although my a lot, this is a smaller one. A lot of my onions look huge though, so I'm excited to harvest them. They're just, just not ready. Looks like my bacon is coming right along there. So I need to keep everything going here. Um, the baby is sleeping right now, so that's how I have a quiet house. And my big kids are big, so they don't want to be hanging around at my feet anymore. They want to be playing and doing their own thing. So this is uh, an interesting season of life where I just very often get windows of free time. Definitely not complaining. My eggs should be just about finished, so I need to put all of this in a bowl. I need to get my eggs out and chill them in an ice bath for a little bit before I peel them. So my process for hard boiling eggs is I boil them in the water with the baking soda for seven minutes and with the lid on. Then I turn the heat off and let it just sit there for another seven minutes and then I take the eggs out, put them in an ice bath for seven minutes and that's what does the trick. That's what makes them so easy to peel. So seven, seven, seven and put baking soda in your water. That's the trick guys. Okay, so here I am eating bacon as I go. I always eat as I cook. Sorry if that bothers you guys, but uh, it's just how it is. Getting everything chopped up and ready to add to the potato salad. So I have an idea here. I'm going to take the yolks and add the mayonnaise and make like a deviled egg potato salad. I think that will be very good, especially with the bacon and the chives. Yeah. That sounds really good, so we'll see how this turns out. Um, didn't measure there, just dumped a bunch of mayonnaise in there. I can always add more if I need to. We shall see. Okay, gonna dice my eggs. Just about finished here, and it looks like I might finish this before the baby wakes up. That will be perfect. As it turns out, forgetting to dice my potatoes before I boiled them turned out not to be that big of a deal. Um, yeah, I just cut them up and added them into everything else and it worked out fine. I have the big kids outside doing some chores too. We're all just kind of working together so we get everything finished and we can enjoy the evening. So I added that. Um, deviled egg filling mix, the mayonnaise and the egg yolk mix. I added that in to my bowl. Now I'm just sprinkling in some salt and pepper. Um, yeah, just eyeballing all of it, but uh, it'll turn out, it always does. And you know, as I tell my daughter when I'm cooking with her, you can always add more, but you can't take it away. So I always start with maybe a little less than I think I need and then add more, but this turned out just fine as far as seasoning, so. Just gonna add this to a pretty dish, sprinkle some paprika on, and my work for today is finished. I got my few little chores done, the kids helped out with their chores, made my dish that I need to bring tonight, and now we get to enjoy our evening.